Okay, I moved this up a little bit since last video so you could see the full page, and I'm sorry that you couldn't see that on the last video. Okay, if we want to think about energy, the energy is defined as the ability to do work, and there's two major types of energy. Kinetic energy is when things are already in motion. That could be everything from little teeny tiny molecules going like that to big objects that are moving <coughs> Excuse me, together. Potential energy is stored energy. This can be due to the position of an object, object such as like right here. It's stored before it falls. That would be in kinetic motion. So as it falls, that's movement. That would be kinetic. Right now it's potential. And then as it falls, it goes into kinetic energy, okay? It could also be seen as stored energy that can be within chemical bonds. Heat is defined as <coughs> energy due to the motion of particles. So this very much relates to temperature. Note we are not measuring cold. Cold is actually the lack of heat, and that's even how your body sort of um, sees it. But average heat, our average, in this case, energy, is what we were talking about as temperature last time. So those terms are very interchangeable in a lot of scenarios. So don't get confused by that. Heat, temperature, energy, they're all absolutely related. Okay. There's different types of units that we can talk about energy in the same way that we can talk about temperature. Remember, energy is the exact amount of something that's coming out, versus temperature is an average amount. <coughs> and that's usually on a larger scale, excuse me. So we can talk about what's known as a joule. A joule is a small amount of energy, as is, believe it or not, a calorie. This is not the same thing as what you know as a calorie when you eat a food. Okay, so let me come back to that. Joules are something that are more commonly used for energy. And that's the standard unit, international unit for energy. So we often talk about something called kilojoules. Same way that a gram is small, but a kilogram is something that's much more substantial. Now a calorie is another type of unit that we use. <clears throat> calorie is defined as the amount of energy needed to raise one gram of water one degree Celsius. Okay, so one gram is about the weight of a dollar bill. Tiny, tiny amount of stuff. One degree Celsius is not that much. Instead, what you're used to talking about when you talk about calories is food calories is a capital C AL, which is the same thing as a kilocalorie. Okay, so those are so much larger than these um, that they're actually a thousand times higher, so a kilocalorie, okay? That's what you look at when you look on the back of a, of a cereal box or whatever it may be. <coughs> they're defining kilocalories, excuse me. One calorie is 4.184 joules. So see how small these joules are? Okay, those are really, really small. Okay. You can determine these things by what's known as a calorimeter, and that's how they are determined usually. Okay, now let's get into some math. Before I even get into math, I want to show you all a diagram, and I'm going to skip ahead in my notes to show you this, okay? Because I think it's important to know where we're heading and what this means, okay? <coughs> Excuse me, I've been sick. Okay. When you have an object and you're heating it up, so the temperature is rising, you're adding heat. Let's say, let's take a piece of ice. The ice is going through the solid state. So say we're starting at like negative 20 degrees Celsius. It would go from here to here. This still takes heat. This takes heat going in, it takes temperature going up. So let's say that was about zero degrees. To actually take that block of ice and melt it takes more energy. <coughs> Excuse me. It could still be at the same temperature, but it takes energy. 
Then you would have a liquid. Your liquid, say you're heating this on the stove, the temperature slowly goes up as you add more heat. But once you have that liquid, it doesn't miraculously vanish and boil off into a gas the second that you hit a boiling of that liquid. <coughs> you still have to add more heat, and as you do so, it'll eventually go into a gas, okay? There are equations for each of these states. This has its own equation for how much heat it takes to get here. This has its own for how much heat it takes to get here. This has its own for how much heat it takes to get here. Same here and here. And every substance has its own values for that that you have to be given or you don't know how to do these things, okay? So let's just assume in these problems either you're going to be given the value or know how to calculate it. Okay. So now let's talk about what those things mean. So let's start with the basics. Specific heat is what we're talking about when those values go on the rise, okay? <coughs> this is something that's for every substance and every state of that substance. So liquid is different than solid. And it's defined as the energy needed to raise the temperature of one gram of that substance by one degree. See how I say here? Note that the state of matter must be correct because liquid and solid are different. So, <coughs> it depends on which definition you have of specific heat as to what units you have. So see how this should be the amount of energy that's I've got here as joules needed to raise the temperature of one gram by one degree Celsius. Therefore, it's joules over grams times centimeters, centigrade, or sorry, Celsius. It can also be given in calories or any other value for that matter for energy. You have to adjust based on what you're given. So another way to look at this is specific heat is equal to heat over mass times change in temperature. That's what the change in the delta means. <coughs> it's the same thing as the final temperature minus the initial temperature. Okay, so let's look at how to do something like this. It might be easier to consider this equation simply in this way. What I did is I took these guys and multiplied them over here and got instead that heat is equal to specific heat times mass times change in temperature. <coughs> if you then look at a type of problem, let's go do an example. How much energy is used to heat 10 grams of aluminum from 20 degrees centigrade to 60 degrees centigrade? And it, see how it gives you the specific heat of aluminum? It's giving you the units here as well. Okay, sorry to close that parenthesis there. So I'm trying to find this, the heat. Here's my specific heat, because I got that from right there. It tells me that there's 10 grams. Grams is going to cancel out with this grams on the bottom. And the change in temperature is 60 minus 20. I know that because that's the change in temperature, okay? So that's going to be the 40. That's where the 40 comes from. See how Celsius cancels out with this Celsius? Be aware, you might have to change units here and there. Okay. So that means that my heat is that many joules. If I correct for two significant figures, it would just be 360 joules. Keep in mind, joules are very, very small, so you don't want to overstate um, how many figures of accuracy you have there. Okay. You all know what a melting point is. Melting point is the same definition as the freezing point. 
ice both melts at that temperature and freezes at that temperature. Okay. Boiling point is the same thing as a condensation point. <coughs> Excuse me. You can actually go from solid directly to a gas through a form called sublimation. If you go from a gas to a solid, that's called deposition, but we're not really going to worry about those things right now. Okay, so what we just did up here is basically on these charts is it's showing you how to go through through this phase or through this phase or through this phase given the specific heat of a substance in either liquid, solid, or gaseous forms. All three of those values will be different. That's something that you would have to be given or looked up. Now what we're going to do is talk about the amount of energy it takes to do this or this, okay? So, let's talk about what's known as the heat of fusion. This is the amount of energy required to melt one gram of a substance while at the melting point. So it's at the right temperature already. This is a similar type of equation as above. The only difference is there's no change in temperature because it's at one particular temperature, okay? So it's just the mass times the heat of fusion. Again, this value will be different for every compound and it will be given or you will know how to find it, okay? There's calories per gram or you can do this in joules per gram. Either one of those is the value for water. Similarly, okay, so the heat of fusion is the melting. The heat of vaporization is how much energy it takes to vaporize, okay? So go from a liquid to a gas. Same thing here, the only difference is, is we've got a heat of vaporization. So see how these values are far different from one another for water? Every single one is going to take different amounts. So if you want to think about this, these are general types of equations that you use that differ only because of their constants that vary um, much more so than, than um, the equation itself does, okay? Okay. So remember, this still is going to require energy right here, right here. So now let's try an example problem, okay? How much energy is needed to evaporate 100 grams of water that's at 50 degrees centigrade? <coughs> I want you to first look back on this before you get started and say, okay, where are we? Water at 50 degrees, I hope you know, is going to be in the liquid state. We're going to an evaporation. So we need to first go up through here, which is going to take the heat of fusion. We then are going to have to go across here, which is our heat of vaporization, and then we're going to have to go up to a, a gaseous state. Okay. Really, once we have it to a gaseous state, then we're done. So we aren't going to raise the temperature anymore, though. So, here's my map. We need to calculate the energy needed to get from the liquid to the boiling point. And here's the equation. Calculate the amount of heat of vaporization of the water. So how much heat that's going to take. And then add those two heats together, okay? Here's how I go about doing that. I take 100 grams. I'm going to change it from 50 to 100 degrees, so that's 50 degrees, times my constant here. That's going to give me a heat. I can change that into sig figs if I want. And then the heat of vaporization, this is the constant that we just were looking at. It gives you this amount, okay? When you add those together, you can give that in either kilojoules or joules, depending on whatever works for you. Okay. I hope that you pause this, go convince yourself of that, and come back and do it again. Okay? Thank you very much.